Welcome to the show tonight. Um, instead of Geology Forum, just going to uh, do something a little different. Uh, it's a little bit of a follow-up of uh, the restoration of the North Shore, the North Shore Greenway, and Lenape Heritage um, Waterfront Park. So I have um, an important panel here. I have an important, very important artist here, and we'd like to educate the uh, Staten Island community about what's going on in the North Shore. So my name is Patricia Brady. This is a live call-in show. And if you have any questions for the panel, feel free to do this. OK, I'm going to swing over. Claudette, Claudette Fay. Uh, uh, Claudette is an advocate of um, the, the community board. and is uh, very interested in the projects, and she's going to be talking a little bit about what's going on. So, hi, Claudette. Hi. How are you? I'm well. I'm doing well. Okay, you made it. Yes, I did. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. That was, a, that was a journey. A journey to get here, yes. <laughs> okay, as long as you made it. Yes. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jane Brose. Jane has um, another person that has been active with this project and she has a few words to say and I'm so glad she made it because some people didn't make it tonight and she's here. <laughs> they so. didn't make it so I had to be here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so Jane, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. No problem. To my right, Linda Eskenaz. Uh, Linda has been um, on the show before and pioneer activist, community board, She's right there with all the projects, and I'm so glad Linda has put this together. And I welcome Linda tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. No, Linda, a long time. Yes. <laughs> long time. Lone Bear. That's it, Lone Bear. <laughs> we know him. Yeah. He's here in Wonderful spirit. Man. Yes. He's here in spirit. I'm going to swing over. And um, on my left, renowned uh, artist. Mm. Beautiful person, great person to know, and I'm honored to have uh, Gregory Perillo here. Um, he's been doing Indian portraits, um, been following the Indians, and he shows total support about this project on the uh, waterfront. So welcome, Gregory. Thank you. Happy to be here. Long time no see. I know. Last time I seen you was at Wagner. Wagner College, yes. Yeah. Yep. I know, time flies. Yeah. Um, time flies. But I tell you one time thing. Time marches on. Absolutely. <laughs> and he's still painting and doing sculptures. That's the good part. So welcome. Thank you. OK, and last but not least, we have the captain. Captain always stays with the ship to the end. <laughs> and we have Captain Kurt here, um, Kurt Ward. I welcome you to the show. Thank you, Pat. Okay, I'm glad you uh, made it to the show tonight to show your support. 
community board no, person and uh, chair, and he's been very active with this project also. Everybody here has put 100% and more into this project. So I want to swing around, and I'll ask, um, let's see, I'll ask uh, uh, Kurt, what is your overview of this uh, North Shore, the waterway? All right. Well, what we're here to talk about tonight is the Lenape Indian Greenway Heritage Trail. It's a project that several organizations on the North Shore work together to try and crystallize over five or six years, perhaps even longer. I don't <laughs> want to step on any toes, um, but Linda was very much in the lead in that. And the community board picked up on their good work, and um, we got everything developed and put together finally last June into one motion, where if I could paint a picture with words for you, what we look to have is from the St. George Ferry all the way to the Gultles Bridge is a nice walking trail with um, lighting and signage, little turtle signs to show where, the, where any points of interest would be all along the waterfront. Um, we're going to ask the commercial operations there to give their out there places a little facelift along the waterfront. There's going to be highway barricades put in. There'll be lighting and seating. Um, it should be a nice place where, I mean, so safe that they would have even school children going, walking along, where they'd be able to stop along the way and look at scenic overlooks. They'd be able to stop at some of the uh, commercial organizations along there and get a good look at our work in waterfront, because we are a maritime community. But sometimes, over time, we forget that with modern technology and stuff. But we are an island community and a maritime community. And now we're trying to open up the working waterfront so that everybody can see it and enjoy it and maybe spot a career for themselves that will right. keep them on Staten Island. Okay, thank you. I'm going to swing over to Linda. And Linda, would you like to um, just uh, talk about a little bit of, uh, you, we did the introduction, and <laughs> just go into it a little bit more. Yes. Uh, what, do, what, do you, what are your plans about this um, well, waterway? Uh, the North Shore Waterfront Greenway on um, Lenape Waterfront Park is a, a plan that encompasses uh, a lot. It's really going to bring about the restoration of the North Shore because, um, of, as Kurt said, it, go, it would sweep down from, um, from the ferry terminal through past Snug Harbor, past West Brighton, the sacred sites where the Lenape Indians lived and buried their dead, where the Revolutionary War, there was a Revolutionary War uh, battle there, uh, and it was an abolitionist site. Frederick Douglass spoke there. This is where the, the uh, proclamation freeing blacks in 1827 in New York State was read from the balcony of the Swan Hotel. Uh, this is. Uh, so many extraordinary things happened in this space. Even uh, Anna Leon Owens, who was the real Anna and the King and I, from the King and I, uh, she lived there and did her memoirs, wrote her memoirs there, and had a small school there. Um, it's it's there's much more, but you know okay, there's so not enough time. So but anyway, from yeah. there, that is the heart of the so waterfront. Then it goes on to past Shooter's Island and okay. and through to the Gothels. Well, I, I want to just tell you that um, and tell the audience that from a historical point of view, very important for Staten Islanders. Yes. They should get to know a little bit of Staten Island history. Yeah. So um, Linda has brought forth the historical point. We're going to come back to you, Lynn. And also, yes. I just wanted to say that history is what we're doing now. We're, we're making it. It's history right now. The future. In the making. And what we do is so important because we have to make a great future. OK. OK, I'm going to come back to you, because she has a lot, of st a lot to say. <laughs> and I want to get to everybody. I want to just swing around to um, this side of uh, my left here. Um, we have somebody joining us. And I guess it was the transportation <laughs> and traffic. <laughs> but we have uh, Fred Davis here. And um, he's an another activist that has um, helped out in putting forth and really sealing this thing. And behind the scenes, this person is. But he's done a lot here for, uh, for the group here. So I welcome you, Fred. OK. I'll give you a minute to settle in, OK? Because <laughs> he just sat down. And we're live. 
Okay, so I'm going to swing over to Claudette. We're going to be breaking this down as much as we can. And remember, about halfway through, we'll start putting up the phone lines if anybody wants to start talking and adding some comments or any questions. Claudette, what about environmental uh, with this uh, section of the North Shore? This project is really uh, environmental friendly. It's green friendly. Um, it's going to produce a lot of uh, good for the community residents. Um, in terms of just improving the aesthetics, if you walk along the uh, sidewalks along this path, uh, whether you're in uh, Port Richmond or West Brighton, uh, uh, Elms Park, and so forth, through Mariners Harbor and then Arlington, um, a lot of these sidewalks are broken along the waterfront side. You know, there's a lot of debris that's shrewd. It's really, it's really blighted. You know, it really doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. So, I mean, whether it's uh, community residents or tourists would not want to come through this area and use uh, mm -hmm. the walkway. So for the community and envi so environmentally, that's one thing. It's the planting of trees are going to help with the air quality. Uh, we remember that Richmond uh, Terrace is a, um, it's a thoroughfare, thoroughfare for cars and trucks. So there's a lot of uh, <laughs> air pollution that's produced as a result of that. Uh, we have a lot of businesses that are not water friendly um, in terms of like a lot of car shops and uh, that type of thing. So we want to bring some green into the area for the community. Um, also in terms of um, having a bike and a walking path helps to uh, give more opportunity for community residents to um, be able to have physical activity because that's a huge thing. Right now, if you go to the St. George Boardwalk, uh, individuals are able to fish. I think along that path, people come out there along the rocks and they fish. Mm -hmm. In our pocket parks, we want to see what we're proposing. Uh, we want to see the same thing so that the community really uh, feels a part of this waterfront, feel mm -hmm. that they own the waterfront, they have access to it because after all, this is their these are their communities and they're sort of locked out by either um, businesses that have shoot, and we're not against economic development and businesses, but certainly where there are areas that can be accessible, such as the pocket parks, we do want to have, right now they're shown with, with cement and, you know, blocks and all kinds of things that really are not beneficial. So we do want to, um, so environmentally, these are the things that it's going to help improve the air, the air quality, uh, the uh, activity, give the residents more activity. Um, to do and also bring business in um, to this area so okay from, from the environmental po point from of the view environment, right because we're going to be landscaping so it will really change the landscape of uh, this 5.5 uh, or as Linda says 7.5 mile uh, trail sure and right now it's just uh, fences and uh, broken right. down shrubs so, and yeah. uh, the trail is uh, in it's not walkable in it, disrepair it, but yeah. it can be done. <coughs> Just needs a little persistence, right, Lynn? Yes, yes it's, like it's coming together of, of everything. Absolutely. So, okay, we're going to swing back over to Fred, mm -hmm. and I gave Fred a minute to uh, to <laughs> settle in a little bit. But Fred, what what's your take on the uh, benefits uh, to Staten Island commuters mm -hmm. uh, to have access to this waterfront? Well. One thing uh, <clears throat> the Green Trail will do is, uh, you know, add beautification to the communities along the uh, Richmond Terrace uh, corridor. And um, and it does a lot for the community to be able to have access to the waterfront, uh, just for be it recreation or just uh, walking uh, from to the ferry. A lot of people do walk to the ferry that live along the Richmond Terrace uh, area. And, um, and this would be a very scenic, uh, you know, environment to be able to walk along the water and uh, and enjoy the uh, park-like atmosphere that it, it would create. Um, I think um, a lot, and, and then also with recreation, there's a lot of folks who uh, would like to uh, uh, get involved with canoeing or any other recreational sport, water sport along uh, along that strip, and. Um, uh, the, it would also draw a lot of other uh, tourists. We have a lot of tourists that come to Staten Island, uh, get on the boat and turn around and go back to Manhattan. And in uh, this way, they would be able to take a walk down the uh, trail, 
experience the communities along Richmond Terrace and uh, and uh, and integrate with the uh, with, with the different people. There are several different communities along that strip, so uh, it would be very beneficial to them. Okay, I agree with that. That sounds great. Jane, to swing over to you. Um, what do, what do you think the progress is right now as far as uh, this? trail being uh, set up and proposed? Well, um, it's being worked on mm -hmm. already. Um, last June, a uh, motion was passed by the Community Board 1 endorsing the, the Greenway, uh, the multi-stage North Shore Greenway Trail. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that Debbie Rose obtained funding for a pocket park down at the foot of uh, Van Pelt. The plan had three pocket parks in it, so that's one of them. Um, funding has also been obtained for the largest one, which will be the Lenape um, Waterfront Park. And it, plans have already been formulated for it, and they're going to be breaking ground this spring. And hopefully by the end of the year it will be finished. Yeah. So uh, okay. it's starting. Yeah, sure. So. It sounds great. Linda, uh, yes. tell us a little bit about the support we've gotten from the um, officials on Staten Island. Can you say a few words oh, about yes. that? Uh, actually, um, this has overwhelming support and universal support, I would say. And I'm very happy to say that our borough president has been just wonderful. And he, uh, he gave us a, a beautiful quote that he was very happy that um, that residents of Staten Island could in, have access to their own waterfront and enjoy it, and uh, and for years to come, mm -hmm. and that uh, this wonderful wa waterfront park would uh, change things and give give people, you know, what they should have. What will happen is that the the Greenway is more than just uh, a a, 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 just a trail. I mean, it's a changing influence, isn't it? It's, it changes everything. Because Richmond Terrace itself is, you know, it's the real identity of the terrace and the identity of all these places will come out. This is a historic, these are historic waterfront communities up and down Richmond Terrace, which was originally an Indian footpath. And, uh, and it was an Indian footpath, and it's one of our first roads from the 1700s. And uh, this is what it really is. And there are many landmarks and many great historic sites along the whole of Richmond Terrace. And um, so, it, so the Greenway will bring out the real identity of, of it. And also, it's an economic plan because, you know, these historic waterfront communities we have great, great housing stock, historic housing stock. And even as Br Bruce Springsteen said, you know, when he was playing an old theater, he said, this is an old theater. The old theaters are the best. And people feel that way about their houses. And we have thousands. We have small <laughs> and big historic houses. Now, when you have waterfront access, which was one of the major tools of modern urban planning, and we've got it, but we don't use it. But this waterfront access, continual waterfront access, and the idea of being along an Indian footpath brings out the environment, because I think the Indians knew how to deal with the environment and be a part of it without destroying it. It brings all the important things out. But, but people will come here, they will restore our houses, and people will get goods and services that is not, are not available now, uh, that we don't have. This will bring businesses. This will bring the real thing out. So that uh, people need things, businesses will open. Of course, it promotes education. But I mean, it prom promotes the economy mm -hmm. so that we can have a thriving economy in the midst of a fiscal crisis, because there's the healthy circulation of money. In addition to that, this panorama of the waterfront, uh, and as Kurt said and, and Fred, this sidewalk is going to be extraordinary. Can you imagine doing all of the sidewalk? 
with solar lights, we call them the northern lights, solar lights, benches, signage, connecting people with their own waterfront. That's what it's all about. And wouldn't you buy a historic house there that is, and we have affordable housing, which is pretty rare. Everyone wants to a piece of New York City, and they can have it here. This is unique housing in, in the five boroughs. This is, um, this is a place Do you remember the that is unique and has these wonderful wood frame houses. So that's one mm, thing. And the other itself. thing is all of this no, is connected 7, 14, to one 7, of the greatest 14. tourist attractions yeah. uh, in the world, the yeah, Staten Island Ferry. Uh, Millions of people come oh, every, you know, all the time. But, you know, we want them yeah. to get off. We can have cottage <coughs> industry, bed and breakfast. We can have them and you know, for cafes, not only cafes, but all kinds of things. As Jane Jacobs said, walk to shop. The plan is great. It's great. I mean, there's yeah, no it, getting it's, around it's, it. But I want to just go over to our special guest for a second. Oh, yes. Because we are so grateful. A, a, Mr. Pula. I mean, we've got the economics. We've got the history. But visually, the Northern Lights, I love it. The yeah. Northern Lights. I want to swing over to my guest here. The person that's going to make this all happen visually, he's going to, what are you going to do, Mr. Perillo? You tell us. Well, I told Linda that I would donate uh, an eight foot, will not be chief, given this peace sign, which she has a photo of it. Yes. I have a. And we also have that in the control room. The, um, it's an eight foot statue. Yeah. Okay, and it's a chief. Of course. All righty, and any particular chief or just a chief? Just the chief. Okay. We have a few chiefs here. You have a captain. Yeah, here, but no, there's only <laughs> one chief. Okay. <laughs> and I see it on the screen there, and it's going to look like that, eight feet. Eight yeah. feet. How are you going to do that? Well, first I, I do a small one, 40 inches. Uh -huh. That's 12 inches. Uh -huh. I'll do one 40 inches, solve yeah. all my problems, then take it to the foundry in Brooklyn and make it eight feet, which I'll have to get on a, a little scaffold. You know, it's fun oh, wow. because it, it helps my other medium, which is oils like that, because when I use three-dimensional, I feel it, mm -hmm. and when I paint on a flat canvas, I have to create 3D. So with that feeling of dimensional in sculpturing helps my oil paintings. I see. And what is this picture in back of us here? Well, I did a show for Wagner College called The First Staten Islanders. The Lenape, the Delaware, the Hackensack, and the Algonquins. Mm -hmm. Since the Lenape was the dominant nation on the island, mm -hmm. And I went, you know, I've been on the island since 1928. <laughs> I was born in 27, but I wasn't born on Staten Island. Oh. I came to Staten Island when I was 14 months old. <laughs> and uh, I've been here, you know, for it seems like 100 years. <laughs> and Staten Island at that time had 38,000 people. So everything was woods. So when I did the first Staten Islanders, I went to the woods where I played cowboys and Indians. Wow. So this woods here was between Manor Road and Slauson Avenue. And that's the landscape of this woods. Now this is an, a Lenape couple. And uh, he's pitching woo to her, making out with her, but they're lovers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. In the back of the mat, the mat houses, they built houses in a dome like the igloo, the Eskimo did with the igloos. Mm -hmm. The Plains Indian built teepees. They were canoe people, and the Plains Indians were horse people. They were more romantic. I lean toward the Plains Indians, mm -hmm. even though I live on Indian grounds. Tell you a story about that. But anyway, he's, you, if you notice that he doesn't look like a Sioux or a Cheyenne, because they have a different apparel. They have their 
buckskin halfway up to their thighs, and they shave their heads. Uh, and uh, she's more like a, 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 a Plains Indian, like a, a Minnehaha or Pocahontas. And she's scrubbing, and he's saying lovely things to her. <laughs> I hope so. And you can see her expression that she's shy. You know, she yeah. likes what he's saying. Yeah. And if you notice the mother-in-law's in the doorway up in the oh, corner. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's yep. the chaperone. Uh-huh. So, uh, I, as I said, I did 35 paintings, and I went to different locations, South Beach and Great Hills and Manus Harbor all over the island to, for landscape. And mm -hmm. I put a lot of canoe work into because mm -hmm. there were masters at canoes and dugouts. But I favored the Plains Indians. Why do you favor them? Well, that? I mean, a beautiful horse, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful landscape that we don't see here. Mm. We see a lot of green, but romance. I, I'm Italian. <laughs> And Italian Roma. Indian or what? Yeah, Neapolitan. Oh. Well, I'm telling you, I, besides that, he's a good dancer. I saw him dance. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I boogie every day. <laughs> it's the truth. I don't boogie like the kids. They look like they're having a fit. I boogie <laughs> like a wet macaroni. You go like that. <laughs> it's, you know, I'm going to be 85. And I still... You still, you still have it. 64 oh. years of marriage. Wow, congratulations. And Mary still boogies. <laughs> Thank and her name is Wanda Woman. <laughs> <laughs> He's putting a pitch out to his wife. Okay. Wow, well, she's deserving. Absolutely. I'm not. I mean, she's gorgeous. I mean, okay. you, you, see, you see her, you know, married 64 years, and she still got that Ann Sheridan look. Oomph, girl. That's what you need. Wow. Gets you painting there well, a little bit more. I, I, my standards are pretty high in beauty because that's my business. You're and an it, artist. Yeah. It, Visual. I, I work seven days a week, and the Indian is my subject because character. When you have character, and when you are an environmentalist like a Native American, you are special because the earth is sacred. I, I just want to uh, put a picture up there of Robert and uh, Margie. Um, they have done numerous functions and events, and you know them well. Yeah. Um, I just want to show a little picture of them. There they are right there. And the opening with uh, Red Storm uh, dance troupe. These people... Um, have to be commended, you know. Uh, they're very humble, and you know it's it's about time that they get recognized. Well, I, I will do anything. I'm going to give them a thirty-five thousand dollar painting so they can raise money. It's selling the tickets at a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and they could raise money. I did that for Wagner, okay. and they raised thirty thousand. I did it for Edgar Holmes. Not for Edgar Holmes, but for hospice. Mm -hmm. And they raised 45000 Look, an anything will help, you know? Any little bit helps. Well, it's my, it's my love subject, mm. Native American. He talks right from his heart. And we see Margie there with uh, the Native uh, uh, mm. dances. There's Jerry at the end there. So um, actually, they did a show about the U.S. troops uh, last month. The wet red storm came in, and mm. there were Indians in one little room, and we did a show. I think so. I seen it. Yeah, they danced it. They had the yes. war bonnets on. Absolutely. And, yeah, it was a great show. So you know, we're all war, uh, working together yeah. um, visually. We've got our uh, an artist here that's uh, renowned in Staten Island. He's part of the Staten Island community. He gives his heart and soul. I know artists. Yeah. I know what they do. It's their heart. It's the heart more than anything. Heart mm. comes first. Yes, and uh, I could tell you something that will blow you away, but my wife said, don't tell them. <laughs> uh, well, what are you going to do? Well, i like to tell you I want to. <laughs> <laughs> tell us. Uh, Get, tell the world. Tell uh, us oh, that. All right, I'll tell you. All right, good. 
This is what no other artist since before BC ever did. Uh oh. And it's it's very special because I had help. My friend Danny went. I did. All right. I'm getting ahead of the story. I'm a World War II veteran. Never off Staten Island. Okay. Never ate nothing but, uh, but Italian food. It's Italian. When, when I went into the Navy, I was in no man's land. I enlisted. I couldn't wait for my 17th birthday to go. <laughs> Put me on a troop ship, bringing the troops to Iwo Jima, bringing the wounded back. I was seasick for two and a half years. <laughs> I was, I couldn't wait to get out. <laughs> and when I got out, God rewarded me. Inspiration. No, he gave me the GI Bill. Oh, oh okay. I went to art school <laughs> for six years. Okay, and, that's part of it. Okay, now the big thing, what my friend Danny did. I, w I had a show on 57th Street, which is the art maker of the world. 57th Street and Madison Avenue. Wally Finley Gallery, richest gallery in the world, privately. 60 paintings. I come off the ferry, and there's a Vietnam soldier with his little girl and his wife. And there are hundreds and hundreds of people, protesters, cursing them and throwing cups at them. It broke my heart. Because I knew how a World War II veteran was treated. And I thought, how could they do that? I went to the show, heavy hearted. I said, I gotta do something. What can I do? I could only do something in art, what I did. I did 50 paintings. From the beginning to the end, no artist ever did a historical event from the beginning to the end of history, such as World War I, the Civil War, World War II, and a little less Vietnam War. Okay, I'm going to break in for a second. Just okay. one second. We have a phone call, <laughs> okay. and we have to... Um, you know, I, I think there are a few phone calls, so let's take the phone callers. We can come back to it. Because okay? the, the bottom line is spectacular. Oh, okay. We have to come back to it then. Okay. All right. Hold That's your it. thought there. Caller, you're live. Hello. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to say I grew up uh, in New Brighton and West Brighton. I'm 53, and in 1967, I lived in New Brighton. That Richmond Terrace, I know all the area you're speaking about, this is going to be the greatest blessing coming to Staten Island because the best memories were growing up in New Brighton and West Brighton. I felt like a millionaire. Oh. They did something right, the Indians. The homes were mansions or the waterfront. I had the best childhood. I would never want to change it. And what you're going to do is going to bring that to many other children you're bringing a blessing, one of the greatest blessings to Richmond Terrace because it's, it's like Coney Island. It's a magical piece of land. Mm. And good luck. Okay, I thank you. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank, thank you. you. All right, we're going to do the punchline quick. Yeah. Because I'm sure <laughs> there's phone callers come, you know, and this we have an audience also. <laughs> okay. This, uh, so the f uh, 50, uh, 43 paint, 42 paintings and one bronze sculpture. I donated it to the museum, uh, the v Vietnam Museum Educational Center in Homedale, New Jersey. Okay, the museum is breathtaking. It's circular. I'm the only artist in there. And I made, I made the paintings from the invasion to the end. I, I portrayed loneliness, bravery, sacrifice, and suffering. 
the whole works, the truth of the Vietnam veteran, the soldier, the unsung heroes. And they will be there, the, the exhibit will be there every day forever. And I will be lecturing college students, high school students, and eighth graders. And they're going to make t-shirts of my paintings and uh, a, a film explaining each painting. Okay. And uh, all this is donated. I don't get a Such red a good guy. cent. Oh. I'm going to break in it again. We have another phone call. I'm telling you, people are interested. It you better too. be. He's the best. I just wanted to say something about Debbie. Okay. Uh, caller, you're live. Hello. Uh, this is really a wonderful project that you're doing. I was just wondering, uh, will it include a dog run? A dog run. Lynn, you want oh, to uh, talk yes. about that a little bit? Oh, yes. And I, I believe there is a, a legend. Um, that the Lenapes or the Indians had, uh, that if you get to heaven, they, at the, at the gates, somebody asks you, were you good to your dog? And if you weren't, you don't get in. <laughs> so. Well, the dog will lead you <laughs> into the Milky Way. Thank you. Lone Bear told me that. Thank you. I couldn't remember that. Okay. Uh, but, oh, yes, thank you for asking. Uh, the Lenape Waterfront Park uh, that's uh, in West Brighton, in front of the sacred sites, in front of where uh, they lived at the, on the hill, it, it overlooks that. And yes, we intend to have more than one dog run. Oh, thank that's you. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Bunny. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Claudette, do you want to add anything else about maybe the bicycle trails and uh, sure. a little bit? Sure. I have to talk about Debbie. Um, what's going to be uh, important is um, the bike trail sort of branches off. So part of the, the uh, park goes, part of the greenway goes inland. Um, I believe at Port Richmond, uh, going along the right of way, uh, the MTA right of way, uh, the bike trail would veer off. And uh, I think we're planning on uh, bringing it underneath the tracks so that there's more space and also safety. So the bikers can have you know, a length where they can ride. And it will meet up um, in, all in, in a Mariner's Marsh. Once we get that site cleaned up, it will meet up with the uh, site in Mariner's Marsh. Um, also, you, know, you could look at this. Um, in terms of when you have marathons or you have people just coming over on the ferry wanting to uh, explore Staten Island, this is an excellent way, as Linda said, to connect the rest of the city with Staten Island because we know Staten Island is the forgotten borough. Uh, I can tell you, um, I speak to my coworkers or others and I say I'm from Staten Island and it's like we're from another country, which is really strange. We're just a ferry ride away, but this is the way. <coughs> This is how they feel about uh, Staten Island. So um, certainly the bike path will help um, to bridge and to bring a sense of community and also to get people to actually come to these uh, communities. Um, also, also um, in terms of uh, the economics, that you can have bike rentals at the ferry terminal further in the island. So we are again looking at economic development, job opportunities that are going to come from these uh, activities. OK, so, before you say something about yes. uh, our leaders, I just want to break in for a second. Sure. There's another phone call. Mm -hmm. Great. So we're going to get to the phone calls. It's important. People from Staten Island are watching. I, they're interested. And we, let's go with the caller. Caller, you live? Yes. Hello. Hi. 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 My name is Rachel. Um, Hi. I love what you're doing there with the waterfront, and uh, it was so wonderful of Mr. Perillo to donate that oh. statue. It's about time you had some recognition. Oh, God. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, it's about time we had some recognition for the Lenape Indians. I mean, they're our indigenous people, and so many people don't even know about them. You know, and I think that's really great. And another thing that would be nice is if they would have, um, eventually, have a little shop somewhere along yes. that area that has made, made on Staten Island. It could be artists, 
um, right. whatever, whether it's jewelry, painting, it, it would be it would be a plus. And uh, yeah. just keep up the good work. Thank you. Okay, I thank you for your okay, call. Okay, thank you. Can I say thank something? You. And, uh, we're, oh, okay, you, you finish your thought, yeah. Claudette. Yes. So just uh, to answer a little bit about the, what the caller, um, Rachel, just uh, was asking, in our pocket parks, especially the larger one, which is the, will be the Lenape Waterfront Park, we do intend on having those type of activities, having festivals and bringing our com uh, Staten Island uh, community uh, vendors, artists together. We do hope to have a museum. There are some buildings there. We don't know the quality of them the parks building, but um, that is the intent. The intent is to definitely um, have this as a venue or places where we can provide opportunities to Staten Islanders. So this is for Staten Islanders, to Staten, and you know, so that artists, uh, food vendors, um, landscapers, you know, the gamut of, of there are a lot, there's a lot that's gonna happen here and there are a lot of opportun economic opportunities as well as cultural opportunities. Okay. And we, um, we hope that uh, the Smithsonian, we look forward to the Smithsonian Museum of the American Indian having a gift shop there and, and perhaps there could be a room where people could come and listen to tapes of, of people that came before us that, you know, have these wonderful memories and uh, an educational place. I'm going to break in one more time. There's another caller. So, caller, you're live. Hello. Hi. Yeah, hi. I'd like to get involved uh, with the, um, with the uh, restoration. I don't have much talent, but I could, you know, help out as much as I can. How would I do that? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, is my number uh, or uh, my... Well, just say it then. Sure. Um, th it's... Well, first of all, one can call Community Board 1. Yes. Yes, 981 uh, 6900. Yes. 718. 718. Say it again. 981 6900. Yes. And ask for Linda Eskenaz, and uh, they'll give you uh, my number, my phone number, and, and uh, email. And uh, we have a website that we're working on uh, and so mm -hmm. forth. But please, you are absolutely welcome. This is what it's all about. Is all of us working together, you know, to really Is this do Linda something. I'm talking to? Yes. Oh, my name is Janet. I used to be in the Stapleton Civilian Patrol for 20 years. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. I remember. And, then, and I'm not doing anything now. And oh, I'm looking for something to come. get involved in, you know. Yeah, Down. we'll be meeting and, you know, we'll... You know, just leave your number there, and we'll call you. And you know, when we meet, we're meeting very. Who should soon. I leave my number with? Uh, community, community board, board one, and then. Oh, okay. You know, I'm on community board one. This is the Greenway committee. Uh, is was a committee of waterfront on community board one, and of course, it was. This has been going on for more years than I care I to know, say. I know. I should have been involved in it more sooner than. Oh this. no, no! It's <laughs> just that it's taken so long. But this is a plan where everyone can come together. Oh, wonderful! I mean, all of us, of course. And to we, me, it's a learning it. experience at my age. Oh, please! <laughs> okay, so we we encourage you to okay. become involved, and I thank you for the call. Yeah. Okay, bye bye. I thank bye. you, and bye bye. I, bye bye. When I when I said yes. universal support, I I mean. All of our elected officials, and I, I spoke to a lot of people today, they couldn't be here tonight, mm -hmm. but our assemblyman, uh, assemblyman Titone, Titone and, and, uh, and Senator Lanza has always um, supported this and so forth, and our councilman, and Senator Markey, and Elizabeth Connolly. I mean, this has been going on a long time. Well, what about and, this? And what there's about this somebody one? really special. You see this, That's Rose? Right. Debbie Rose, our councilwoman. And this is for you, Debbie. Wonderful. <laughs> we know your heart is in this. And yes. I and spoke to her last month. Linda yes. has been to the office all week speaking with representatives. Well, and she went in for surgery. She couldn't make it. She is it's for she you. Was operated on, and um, she wanted to come. But so, we tried to stop her from getting an ambulance and coming right down here. <laughs> <laughs> Next no, but show. We. Are, we Oh, yes. The next show. Yeah. I'm going to break in for a second. Okay. I just wanted to wish her 
you know, we do it as a group. We we all want we to all wish you Debbie on live well. television. We wish you a well. speedy recovery. And thank you for everything you've done. And uh, get okay. well. And there she is, Linda. She's working from her. That's home from now. Linda's heart, and that's from all of our heart. Yes. Okay, I'm going to break in again. We have another caller. Caller, you live? Hello. Hi. Yes, uh, good evening. My name is Ed. Hi. Uh, I happen to tune into your show, and uh, wow, wonderful. I happen to be a West Brighton <laughs> resident, and I live right <laughs> off Richmond. And this is fantastic. And, and, and uh, especially I see Mr. Perillo there and, and yourself. Uh, uh, this is terrific. What I'd like to know is, uh, could you please give me the name of the outfit and a phone number because I would like to contact you and possibly uh, help out in uh, any which way I can. Okay? That's all. I want to thank you for accepting my call. Okay, nice. thank you. Linda, yes. the phone number again for Community Board yeah, 1? Yes, the Community happen. Board 1, and they will be in, happen, and will be in touch with me, and I will be in touch with you. Happened. It was like Friday uh, every it's, night. I'm, uh, I'm, and 718 981-6900. Okay. Yes, and please call. Thank you so much. This is all about all of us doing everything together. And when I said uh, the whole plan, uh, this, the sidewalks, DOT, the, the right-of-way, EDC, and, uh, and, and New York City Transit, I mean, there's, there's that comes right to the, the burial grounds. Uh, people, Trinity Chapel was built in 1802 there. People came in boats from New Jersey and, and got off the boats where Alaska Street is and came up. That also is a historic footpath. I'm going to break in, Lynn. Okay. We have another caller. So, Great. caller, are you live? Pop up. Caller? Hello, yes. Hi. M my name is Barbara. Hello. Yeah, and I'm calling. I'm wondering if there will be signage, uh, historical signage, at different points along the walkway um, for all the okay. things that happened um, in different places. And I think it would be great for the people who come over from Manhattan to learn about Staten Island because yes. they don't really know that much. Very okay. exciting. Okay, I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to shove shove it over to, to <laughs> Captain Kirk. Uh, could you talk about the uh, signage that's sure. uh, going to be happening? Uh, yeah, one of the big projects the committee, the okay. Greenway subcommittee, was working on was identifying over 100, up to 150 points of interest, all within all within walking distance, right along Richmond Terrace, whether they be Indian cemeteries or scenic overlooks, uh, working waterfront things that you'd be able to see, but there'll be over 150 project-specific signs. They picked out a nice handsome little turtle that's, uh, that's going to have that all with the Lenape Indian, Lenape Indian Greenway Heritage Trail <laughs> logo on, just specific to this project. Short answer, yes, over 150 points of interest right along our waterfront. Sounds good. Very informative. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank okay, you. I thank you for the call. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, would anybody from the audience like to ask a question? The time is starting to wind down, but um, we do have an audience here. Mike, would you like to say something? Okay, we have somebody that has a question. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Um, I've, I've gone the uh, trail uh, as it is now, and I'm just curious how you've worked out some of the choke points uh, such as the uh, dry dock company uh, that's oh, yeah. near. Thank you. Great. How how did that work out? Because I know there's no sidewalk on that side of the street, and the dry right. dock owns virtually yes. all the property there. Yeah, They're, the working waterfront, and particularly uh, Cadell and uh, Steve Khalil, who's been wonderful all these years, and Atlantic Salt and um, Container Terminal. We work with the working waterfront, and we, you know. Cadell is the oldest working shipyard, continually working, working shipyard uh, in New York, I believe. Absolutely wonderful. Yes, and they, we have these magnificent plans, really, to um, bring, right now, the right-of-way is right near the water and in the middle of their businesses. So we would switch it to be right up on near the terrace, but to have a 20-foot 
path, you know, going on that level uh, t of, of a biking and hiking trail. We would be along there so people from everywhere could look out and see the vitality of our working waterfront. And, you know, we're all working together, and that's what I meant when, you know, this is really works in every way. And we don't have to have another zillion dollar study. I mean, we're doing it, you know, we're doing it because it's the right thing to do. That's it's, great. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that there's so much cooperation uh, going on. Oh, yes. yes. Thank you very much. I'm going to switch over here. Thank you, Mike. Uh, switch over on this side. Fred, do you have any last words? Because the time is going by really fast. Well, um, you know, a lot was spoken to, uh, you know, what the vision of, uh, of the Green Trail is, and it does include all of um, what was mentioned. Uh, there, you know, will be uh, signs along the trail of historic significance um, that would point out uh, different uh, points of interest and places of interest. Um, and uh, it'll be an environment that will be enticing for people to come down and engage uh, uh, this in the park like atmosphere and uh, walk along the waterfront. So uh, the economic benefits are going to be great uh, because one of the things that we're going to really push for is that we have more Staten Island based businesses involved in the construction and development of, of the Green, uh, mm -hmm. green Trail. Okay, thank you. Time is going by really fast. Mm -hmm. Captain, do you have any uh, last thoughts? Yeah, if I could, uh, I'd like on behalf of the Community Board to thank the Mayor's Office and the city agencies that were involved in pulling all of this together, uh, New York Department of City Planning, uh, New York City Economic Development Corporation, of course, Borough Hall. Once more, Debbie Rose, uh, out outstanding councilwoman, has exceeded my expectations at every turn. Um, but I think it's important that your viewers know that we're not talking about plans anymore or studies. Um, by this time next year, there will be a park on the waterfront between Van Name and Van Pelt Avenues. Mm -hmm. There will be a five-acre park that you could go walking around. It what many of the North Shore residents might remember, a big green and yellow sign, um, Marine Power and Light. Uh, it used to be an old shipyard. Uh, it was just an industrial shipyard that the Port Authority has donated $40 million to, to remediate that land. And, and the parks has agreed to take it over. And that's going to be a passive park for us. I think it's important it's now major that people realize park. these are not studies anymore. These are things that we're really going to see within the next year, and and if Jesus if Jeeps, if they start falling by the wayside, uh, this neighborhood should really stand up and, and really fight like a wet cat because, again, these aren't studies anymore. These are things that we're promised. City agencies are on board. As far as the the walkway coming along, there's over nine city agencies involved. They've all signed on board to the community board's motion, accepted the tasks that they have to do. And we look forward to helping them carry them out. And it's they're fulfilling Staten Islanders' vision now. It's no more people coming in from the city and from Albany to tell us what's good for us. The studies are over. They're responding to what the community wants. And it's, it's just going to be beautiful. There's going to be 12-foot sidewalks on either side of the terrace. Even the, the, the side across from the water will have storefronts on the first floor, residential on top. We're talking designer brick. It's just it, it's going to. Really, I, I, Wendy, you're going to love when I say this word, but now this is the first time I'm saying it. I believe we're actually looking at the renaissance of the North Shore waterfront. <laughs> so, uh, wow. He said it. That's, that's great. Economic, <laughs> environmental. Thank you. Thank you. You said it for everything. Okay, yes. the time. How's the time, Chris? One minute. I want to thank everybody. We've run out of time. Happy New Year 2012. I want to thank all our guests, our crew. And we will do a follow-up show. Debbie, feel better soon. And uh, any last thoughts here? Yeah, the, um, uh, we Christine, Christine Show. Christine Show. Christine Show. Christine yeah. Show. Um, uh, Deb Ra Rose, Psychic, 2012 Predictions. Okay. That's next. 10, uh, 10 p.m. Channel 35, Chris? OK, tonight. So if you're interested in astrology, She's good. Deb Deborah Rose. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Claudette, for that. So until next time, there will be other shows. We're going to do follow-up shows. Mr. Perillo, thank you for being here. You were great. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing the statue. But you're going to make me boogie. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> next time. There we go. Next time. <laughs> but we would like to thank Mr. Frillo. Okay, and the we'll president and see you next office. time. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. I'm sorry. We are the Red Storm Drum and Dance Troupe. My name is Gary Greyhawk. I am the head singer and co-founder of the Red Storm Drum and Dance Troupe. We've been around for almost 10 years. Did a show last it's an honor to be here today doing this little filming Indians. for Indians our troops, honoring Indians. our troops, a little gift, maybe for the pre-holiday season coming along. And before we continue, I'd like to do a quick intro of my family that's here today. Mr. Ed Sunwolf, Ms. Linda Walksfar, Katori Running Horse Bold Eagle, Rick Madison Bear Powell, Steve Angry Buffalo, Giovanni Wamakanaka Sanchez, Mr. Robert Bold Eagle. And we're here today to not only honor our Heritage Month, which is Native American Heritage Month, but we're also here to give you guys a little bit of ourselves as a gift for the upcoming holiday season. A little bit of a homecoming, you know, preempted, but still very well needed. And I'm sure that everyone here agrees with me when we all have, it's a great honor to have our troops out there fighting for our rights and our freedoms and for our ways of life. Thank you so much right now. I'm sure you'll be hearing that word many, many times during this uh, filming. But right now we'd like to do a little bit of dancing for you. And the first dance we're gonna have for you is Mr. Robert Bold Eagle and of course his son, Victoria Running Horse. And they will do for you their version of a war dance, what we call the men's traditional or a victory dance. It is a dance that was performed by our gentlemen, our warriors, when they came home to show their appreciation for their people and the honors that they received while out fighting for us and for our people. So without further ado, guys, let's give them a good song, eh? Oh. Oh, oh. 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 